Welcome to Christina's Kitchen. We are so glad to have you with us, and I'm sure more of you will join as we go along. Uh, this is our normal monthly cooking class uh, that we do every month. Um, of course, this is our second one where we have no audience except uh, my husband Daniel, who is helping to run the camera, and my employee Lexi, who is also helping to run the camera. So, um, Rather than cook something absolutely amazing and you not be able to taste it, uh, we thought we would do something a little different today. And so our class is actually called Pantry Preparedness. Uh, how many of you have wondered, you know, what types of things should I keep in my pantry? Uh, what should I be prepared for? Um, how much food should I have around the house? Uh, and uh, some of those questions. Uh, what to do in case of emergency. And so we're just going to answer a few of those today. I don't claim to be an expert, uh, but I'm going to share just a few things that I have learned um, and uh, things that I have done over the years. But before we get started, I'm going to ask Daniel to come up and have an opening prayer for us. Well, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Thank you for your many blessings towards us. And even though things are a little different than usual, Lord, I pray that you will bless this class and bless all those who are listening in. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, I think, Daniel, you have some slides for us, or what are we doing with that? I do. Um, so when we think about preparedness, um, there's a variety of things, you know, there's always preparedness of what to do at home. And is that the slide that we have up yet? Yes, uh, what to do at home, uh, just to like, some of us are right now shelter in place or stuck at home. Uh, what are some things we could have done to prepare? Well, probably some of those things you're already thinking about what I should have done to prepare for this. Um, but just some very simple things. I do not believe in hoarding. Uh, but uh, it's always good to have a few things on hand. And you'll see a very simple list here on your screen. Um, it's good to have a one to two week supply uh, in your house at all times of food, um, especially your fresh food like produce, uh, water, and also medications. Uh, those are all very important things and, you know, one to two weeks, that's not that much food. Like for uh, one of the things I just recently started was um, uh, ordering, because I wanted a little bit more organic produce, I started ordering uh, Misfits, which was an organic box. And it comes to me once every two weeks with my fresh produce. And uh, I use that produce within two weeks. Um, just simple things like that. And then there's other things that you can maybe stock up a little bit more on. Um, once again, I don't recommend hoarding, but uh, it's common sense to have a few extra things on hand. Uh, so these, I try to do a two to four week supply of uh, non-perishable foods, uh, dry foods, canned foods, um, you know, beans, rice, uh, oats, you know, that type of stuff, pantry staples, uh, as well as some paper products. No, I don't recommend buying a thousand dollars worth of toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> But having a few weeks of uh, toilet paper in your house is fine. Um, and then also cleaning supplies are also important to have on hand. Uh, just, you know, a couple weeks supply. Daniel, were you trying to tell me something? I said we need to say hi to June. She said, she said hi to you. June, welcome. Hi. I'm so happy. Thanks for joining us. Yes, any of you who have questions or comments, uh, feel free to share them because then you can be part of my live audience even if I can't see you. I know you can see me. Um, Daniel is very faithfully reading the comments, and so he will holler out at me when you say something. What's that? Oh, and Lexi is too. They both are. <laughs> I'm the only one that can't see them, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we can take that slide off now. Uh, so uh, just a few things. If you have never really built up your home pantry before, how do you start? Uh, who has enough money to just go out and build a pantry from scratch? I don't think any of us do, and I never do. Uh, so one thing I like to do is I make it a habit 
of inventorying my pantry at least every few weeks or at least once a month to see what I have on hand. Uh, and then just buy a few things as I need each time. Um, buy, you know, like if I'm gonna go and I get my week's worth of groceries, I'm gonna buy a few extra things to put in the pantry. Um, if uh, you do that, then it's not gonna throw your food budget way out of whack. And Victoria says hi, well, thank you. Hi back. Um, if uh, you are, uh, whether, whether it be food, pantry supplies, whatever, just getting a little bit each week will help to keep you from having a huge grocery bill um, at the end of the month. And uh, it will keep your pantry supplied all the time. Or if you're building it up, buying a little extra will slowly build up your pantry over time. Uh, it also helps the grocery store so you don't like just go and clean off the shelves one day and leave nothing for anybody else. So be nice, uh, be nice to everybody, be nice to the grocery store, uh, be nice to your fellow customers and nice to your budget. Um, just slowly build that over time. Uh, the other thing that's important once you build your pantry uh, with that couple weeks supply of food is not to forget it's there. Some of us, it's really easy to buy stuff and then we forget that uh, we bought it. And the next thing you know, you know, you open your pantry and look at the expiration date. Oh, this expired a year ago. Um, <laughs> try not to let that happen. And that's one reason why I say don't buy, you know, huge amounts at a time uh, within reason. But uh, do check your expiration dates when you buy. Uh, so like if you're buying some canned goods, look at the date. Most canned goods, they give you a year in advance, but sometimes if a can has been on the grocery store shelf for a while, maybe you only have six months. Um, and so regularly checking your expiration dates in your pantry will help make sure that you don't accidentally end up with rancid food and really wasting your food budget. So that's a few uh, things on your home pantry. And if there's time at the end, I'll talk a little bit more about um, some things that we can do. But uh, what I wanna talk about now is emergencies. There are emergencies that come up, uh, and there's all different kinds, right? Okay, right. Okay, so with our emergency supply kit, uh, these is basically a kit that you would need to pick up the box and carry it with you in case of emergency. Uh, you never know when that could happen or where you'll be when it happens, but I don't recommend this kit to be in the car. We'll talk about the car kit later, so don't get confused. So this is a simple emergency supply kit. Uh, you'll need at least a three-day supply of food and water, uh, some health supplies, some personal care items, first aid, safety, electronics, uh, documents, that sort of thing. That's a simple emergency supply kit. So now I'm going to go into the car now. Um, and we're gonna go into a few more details as to what types of emergency supply kits we need to pack. So the first one, like I said, is the car. Uh, now with a car, you can't pack three days supply of water and food in your car, because guess what? It's either going to melt in the heat or it's gonna freeze to a solid block in the winter time, right? <laughs> so, so you want uh, uh, some things in your car and some things you have to remember to bring with you when you get in the car, okay? So first let's talk about what to always keep in your car. Um, the things I always keep in the car is, I have a little tool bag, and if any of you have ridden in my car with me, you've probably seen this crazy bag, either somewhere in the back seat or floating around my trunk. Um, and uh, I actually bought this bag um, when I left home for the first time, when I got my first car. So this. <laughs> The, the zipper's broken on it, so I'm probably gonna have to replace it soon, but it has served me very well for quite a few years. Uh, so let's look and see what I have in it. Uh, there's a number of things I have in here. Uh, one is, I have a toe strap. Uh, you wouldn't think that a toe strap would be a necessary thing in a little bitty car like I have, uh, because obviously my little Honda Fit is not gonna pull anybody else out of the mud. What I want to know is, does this girl know how to use the toe strap? 
Well, I know where the hook is on my car to hook it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if I was stuck in the mud and some truck came along, then he could pull me out with my toe strap. <laughs> or if you happen to be uh, have a tree down across the road, you can hook the toe strap onto the tree, wrap it around, and hook it to itself. It, it's not too big. You can pull the tree off the road. And Daniel's speaking from experience because he has had to do that more than once on our little country road. Well, let's just say the last time I did that, the tree was partly not completely fallen over, and it picked the back of my car up and almost threw me off the road. So Don't try, this, me. try this with caution. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said if the tree wasn't too big. so Right. Um, anyway, so we have a toe strap. Um, I also have, and it didn't fit in the bag, I have uh, jumper cables. And there have been many times that I've been very thankful that I had jumper cables when some kind person came to my rescue because I'd left my lights on and my battery was dead or my battery just simply died. And uh, they didn't have cables, but they were willing to jump me because I had my own. And sometimes you can be the good Samaritan and help someone else out. Yes, although my car is pretty small battery, so I can only jump start another car, uh, a pickup well, truck, a I have truck. to tell them to wait until someone else bigger comes by. <laughs> uh, Macy says she misses us. I miss you too, Macy. All right, so another thing that's in my tool bag is duct tape. Now, obviously this is still brand new and it's been in my car for five years. So thank God I haven't had to use it yet, but you never know when you might. And you never know what pieces of your car you might need to duct tape together so that you can get to the mechanic somewhere along the road. Uh, I also have, thanks to Daniel, I have a chainsaw. Now, when I'll ever use this, I don't know, but maybe I can ask some good Samaritan on the side of the road to help me. But this is a chainsaw. I gotta show this to you because it is fascinating. It is a chain. And it's a saw. And it's a saw. And you can put it around your wrist. And you could be a hand chainsaw and saw a tree that's too big for my car to pull out with a toe strap. Aye, aye, aye. Um, anyway. Yeah, I mean, if the tree is too big for your car, <laughs> maybe sawing it. But saw I, mean, all night. I, I mean, if that's all it took to get to no, no. My husband thinks of everything. He made sure I had a chainsaw in my car. <laughs> You know, when you live in the woods, you can't be too prepared, right? Um, I guess if the toe strap accidentally got uh, borrowed from my car and not replaced, I'd be glad I had jeans on. I have a few other things, like um, these are actually, this is emergency rope um, that can turn into cord, very long cords. I have a sterno can in case uh, I needed the heat for any reason. And of course, with heat, you have to wait to make the heat, so I've got a lighter. Doris wants to know, where do you find the hand chainsaw? <laughs> Daniel, where'd you find the hand chainsaw? I want to say I got it on Amazon. <laughs> okay, he thinks he got it on Amazon. Either I got it on Amazon or I found it in a, in a hardware store somewhere, but I think it was on Amazon. I wouldn't be surprised because you ordered more than one. All right, some other things. These are zip ties. Now, I'm very thankful I have these because there's parts of my car underneath the car that are currently zip tied together. And whenever I hit an animal, it, they break and so I have to replace them. So, I have zip ties. Bailing wire and duct tape. Got that, you'll be on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a few first aid things. So I have a little first aid kit. There's all different first aid kits that you can get. Um, this is just a little simple one that I found um, at Walmart, you can find all different kinds. This is a little ace bandage. Um, I like to use natural remedies and wrap up with onion or whatever else. And so ace bandages are a great way to manage yourself up. Um, my grandma found me a life straw. That's not super important, but hey, it's there. It's under my emergency kit. It's one of those straws you can drink out of the creek and it's supposed to have a filter inside it to keep you from dying. Say hi to grandma, she's watching. Hi, Grandma. You bought this for me. Thank you. <laughs> and I have a few space blankets for emergencies. Do those things actually work? If you were dying, you'd be glad you had it, especially if it was cold outside. All right. And this also came from my grandma. It's a good thing she's watching me. She gets to see all the things I keep in my car. This is one of those little uh, multi-tool thingies. It's got a knife and like 
all kinds of little gadgets. That is absolutely not necessary, oh, but it's a lot of fun. Oh, you want to see it? Here, let me get it. I'll, I'll pull it over here. It'll focus, I'm not sure. Yeah. You kind of see it's got all the... I'd hate to have to cut anything very big with that saw, but, you know, <laughs> at least it has a bottle opener. <laughs> but I will say, um, my favorite, absolute favorite tool, I don't even keep in my toolbox because I use it so much, I keep it in my glove box. And it's even purple. Um, and that is one of those multi-tool things. I can't say enough good about these things. Uh, where you've got your wrench and your pliers and your knife and I can't, I can't I can't even count how many times I have had to cut open an avocado with this knife because I didn't have any other knife in the car and I was starving. Um, but it also has your uh, pliers and, and screwdrivers and all that kind of stuff. Very handy little tool to keep in the glove box. See, I have a few more things in my tool bag before I get hey, myself too distracted. You're welcome. Aww. All right, I have a few more things in my tool bag here. Um, I have a trash bag. Uh, those can function as all kinds of things. I also have some real tools. These are very precious tools to me. Um, I bought these with birthday money when I was nine years old. <laughs> so I've got some real screwdrivers and wrenches and that kind of stuff. Um, and no, these are not the ones that they're begging for. These are just simple little dust masks, but I do keep a few, uh, just a couple disposable dust masks in my car. Uh, if you were ever in a fire and the smoke was thick, these could save your life. Um, and if you don't have them, then you just have to use an old t-shirt. Um, I'm gonna put that slide back up so anyone can see that list again. Go over oh, there's a couple more things I wanna show before you do that. Oh, okay. I'm gonna throw this stuff back in here. Um, I'm gonna leave this out for now, put it all back later. So there's a few more things I keep in my car. And these actually, I count them as so important that I don't put them in my toolbox. And that is a flashlight, which that's so important that I end up borrowing it and I lose it and uh, have to put another flashlight in the car. Um, I also keep uh, my silver gel. <laughs> I love silver gel. Uh, it has helped me so many times when I've chipped and fallen on my delivery route uh, and there's no access to anything else. So, so Victoria is waiting for you to pull a piano out of your bag. <laughs> well, the piano's on my phone, so I always have that with me in my pocket. <laughs> I have a piano app on my phone, I really do. Um, I can't live without a piano. Um, I also have a backup pair of glasses because you know what? I can't drive without them. If something happened to mine, I would be, uh, calling on the side of the road asking someone to drive me home. And um, cell phone charger cable, and of course a way to plug it in in the car so I can recharge my cell phone. And an ice scraper. And I prefer the nice long handled ice scraper with the brush to brush the snow off. Um, but I keep that in my car at all times. Um, I also much, have- Much chagrin. Yes, my husband gives me a bad time about it because I never take it out even in the summertime. But that way, when we get that fluke uh, frost in September, I don't have to go hunting for it. It's still in my car. Uh, this is a tire pressure gauge that also is a hammer that will break glass if you are locked inside your car, as well as a seatbelt cutter, all in one. <laughs> Handy multi-tools. Eva Tartars, or Eva Tartars said hi. <clears throat> hi! <laughs> all right, I also keep um, some spare keys in my car, and I also uh, keep a toothbrush in my car, and I'm always thankful if I get to church and forgot to brush my teeth, um, or after potluck if I've got green me in my teeth, it really helps. What else? Oh yes. I keep, um, you know how much we rely on plastic nowadays? Like, none of us keep any cash in our wallets. And all it takes is for you to be like driving somewhere and for the electricity and the internet to go down and none of the uh, credit card machines at the gas pumps work and you have absolutely no way to get gas to get home. And so I always keep a little bit of cash in my car and I always keep it in the form of $1 bills. 
um, because that way you never have to worry about making change. So just trust to, me, it's not worth breaking the windshield and getting caught for the amount of cash she keeps in her car. <laughs> <laughs> no, I keep a few quarters in my car, which I didn't bring those in. But I have enough quarters that I could fill up my tire at least once or twice because it takes a dollar or a dollar fifty to fill up one tire now with air um, at the gas pumps and a few one dollar bills so I could put some gas in my car to get home. Um, I also keep a copy um, of my driver's license. Um, in case I lose it, then I know what my number is and have at least some form of backup ID. Uh, the other thing I never travel with out is water. I always take water with me. If I'm going to be gone on a trip, Daniel gives me a horrible time because I take at least two or three or four gallons of water on every trip that we take, even if it's only a weekend. And uh, if I'm just going to be gone for a half a day, I have at least two or three bottles of water with me. So, so you need to you need to tell our audience about how you got started with all this traveling stuff when you actually met your your husband who was a stay at home body. If I tell us, so we'll be here all night. Oh, well, you can tell us right right there. <laughs> well, let me tell a couple more. Karen things. Creek Moore okay. said, "Hi, neighbor. I miss you. We miss you, Karen. Can't wait until you can open up again." All right. The other thing I always take with me is a jacket. Now, I have a lighter jacket that I take in the summertime and a warmer jacket in the winter, of course. But even in the summer when it's 100 degrees, I always take a jacket because I have been caught in too many thunderstorms where it dropped to 70 degrees in about 10 minutes and I froze because I didn't have a jacket in my car. <laughs> and the other thing that my husband drives me crazy for taking in the car is a blanket. And this is a very heavy duty blanket it functions as an ice chest in the summertime when I need to wrap my groceries in it to keep them from melting on the way home. It works as a picnic blanket if we're out and we got to eat lunch somewhere on the side of the road. It works as a warm blanket if we're freezing cold. And it has worked as a warmth blanket to give to someone else who was in a car accident in the middle of winter and they were freezing in their car but couldn't get out. Um, it has wrapped up uh, people on the side of the road while they're waiting for an ambulance and they were in shock. Um, and by God's grace, I got, I got the blanket back. <laughs> the hospital gave back to me afterwards because they ended up taking it with them on the ambulance. Um, but uh, having a blanket, I can't live without it. Um, if you have fragile items, you can wrap them up with. Um, so I never ever take a blanket out of my car. So uh, this is basically my car emergency kit, and you'll see um, there's a few other things I like to always keep with me, and that is um, some kind of food. If you're going to get in the car, even if you're just doing a quick day trip, um, always keep some snacks or food in your car. Um, I can't even count how many stories of people who have been stranded on the interstate in the middle of winter because there was an accident and there was ice, and uh, the interstate was a parking lot and it took a long time before Red Cross could bring any food to the, the automobile windows and those who had food in their car were very thankful that they had it. Um, like I said it's not something you can leave in your car because it's going to melt or freeze but you can keep them in your purse or have a little bag that you can take with you whenever you go in the car. So that's the car. Um, I'm going to move on now to our next section and you may need a fire is something very real that we do have to deal with out here. We do live in the woods. Macquarie County is like, you know, almost 80% national forest um, and national land. And most of that is trees. And uh, we know from a few years ago what happened in Gatlinburg with the forest fire that if the conditions are right, you don't get much warning. Um, a lightning storm during a dry fall day can produce multiple forest fires all at once and you may have to evacuate with little to no notice. Um, or maybe it's a tornado um, or whatever it is, there may be evacuation necessary at a very quick time. And if that happens while you are at work, there is no way to drive home to get your stuff. Uh, you need to be prepared to go at a moment's notice to a shelter, designated shelter. Um, and those shelters, I was actually just talking to one of my friends um, who is a Red Cross agent 
And he told me, he said, you know what? If there was an emergency, the Red Cross can set up a full shelter for people to stay in in a matter of a couple hours. But it might be a while before they get any food. Shelter is easier to provide for than food. So I just want to show you some of the things that I keep in uh, my work emergency box. Now, when Daniel used to work at the health department, I had a box for him too. And uh, he kept it at work. Uh, I keep one with me at work. And it's kind of funny, you know, storing food in a box at a restaurant. But, <laughs> you know, even if you're at a restaurant, if you had to evacuate at a moment's notice, you don't have time to open the fridge and pull out a bunch of food. So, um, Dan, you want to show us our work slide for our work emergency kit? Yeah, got it. Okay. Lisa Musgrove said Daniel is, is a lucky man to have such a prepared wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him comment on that. That, that is so true. <laughs> <laughs> you speak. <laughs> okay, so with our work emergency kit, um, I think you've got the slide up now? Yeah. So I want to just uh, give you a few things here. Um, for a work emergency kit, you want food for two to three days. Um, and I'll show you a few things. You also want um, something to eat with, uh, as well as a can opener if you brought cans. Um, and you need something to sleep in. Uh, you need some hygiene products. And uh, I should talk over here, shouldn't I? Sorry. Um, and you also need uh, a change of clothes. Uh, so I want to show you what I've got here. And this is gonna, this is all mixed up because I had to pack it all into my box so it would fit. But uh, here I have a bag with some change of clothing. Now let me tell you, this. This change of clothing business isn't just if you uh, have to evacuate. I've had to use this change of clothing. Um, thankfully, I haven't had to use the pajamas, but I have had to use the change of clothes on more than one occasion. Um, June may well remember a time when we were out at the farmer's market and this guy decided to open up and downpour on us and we got completely drenched. Um, the little tents over the top of us didn't even hardly touch a thing. And we were sopping wet from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, and we looked like drowned rats. Well, unfortunately for me, I was supposed to make jam that evening. I had like five gallons of berries that had to be made into jam after the farmer's market. And here I come into the restaurant dripping wet. I was so thankful for my change of clothes that was in my emergency box. I was able to change into all dry clothes and make the jam, and I had no trouble. Um, so anyway, enough on clothes. June says she remembers. <laughs> I'm sure she does. Who could forget? <laughs> oh. So I threw a few bottles of water in my box um, in case something happens and I don't have my gallon of water that I can grab. At least I got a little bit of water with me. Uh, but a gallon of water would be best for your uh, work emergencies. Let's see, what else do we have here? Ah, we have a sleeping bag. I'm going to stick that over there for now. And I think now you all know why this is important, right? A roll of toilet paper. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> oh. That's what I was trying to do so we could see the table. Oh, good. You're going to turn it so the table is visible? I'm going to try it anyway. Okay. And then, of course, ah, there we go whatever hygiene products you need and what else do we have in here uh, waiting for her to pull a snake out of it <laughs> ah, so i have a garbage bag in here i have some spare batteries for the flashlight um i also have a few one dollar bills um as well as a copy of my driver's license um I have a bowl to eat out of. I know it's not the greatest thing, but hey, if you're starving, like any kind of bowl will work, right? I have a can opener, which it looks like I didn't even take out of the package. <laughs> and um, a couple more sterno cans. Uh, you know, I was, when I was talking to my friend who's with the Red Cross, 
he was telling me, he's like, you know what? We always say, oh, we can just eat cold food. But especially if it's in the winter time, there's something about warm food that helps your morale. Um, and of course you can always use it to help someone else warm up something as well. Let's see. Now we got some food in here. Oh, I have one other thing too. I have a tarp. You never know what you'll need or how you'll need it, but I keep a tarp in mind. If you were outdoors, you would be thankful you have. I also have uh, some silverware to eat with. Fork, knife, spoon, napkins, that kind of stuff. That will also help with eating. So what do we have? So it's kind of funny. I recommend if you make a box like this with food, that you should check it every six months. Um, I failed to do that this last year. <laughs> and Lexi and I found all kinds of expired stuff. But not only was uh, my box expired when I went through it and I had to replace all the food, uh, which you need to do every six months to a year. Uh, but I discovered that everything I had packed uh, last time I packed this box up was stuff that I don't even like to eat now or I'm allergic to. So, you know, your taste buds change over time too. So it's not just expiration dates. You might want to just check and make sure it's really something you want to eat. So anyway, um, I have a box of dry cereal. You can have any kind of dry cereal you like. Um, I happen to be mostly gluten-free, so this is rice. Hi. I've got some soy milk. You can also do powdered milk um, if you don't want to do liquid. Of course, with powdered milk, you got to make sure you pack extra water so you can rehydrate the powder. Some dried fruit. Uh, is always nice. This I like this like bread, and it keeps longer than bread. They're corn thins. It's kind of like a rice cake. If you want to know where we get them, we sell them here at the restaurant. And let's see. Granola bars. That's something that always keeps well. Of course, we got to have some of Christina's kitchen granola. <laughs> That makes great dry cereal too. It just... must come from Christina's. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can make your own granola too. <laughs> That's a lot of work. We've got some crackers. Uh, these are almond crackers here I've got. Uh, I found these at Aldi's and there's actually other kinds too you can find. This is a um, ready to eat quinoa meal. The quinoa is cooked already. And if you don't mind eating it cold, it's ready to eat. Um, and this one is a artichoke and roasted peppers. So it has, uh, it has um, cooked artichoke hearts and uh, seasonings and you dump that into your quinoa and you have a nice filling, savory meal. Um, and it's like I said, it's already no heating, no cooking necessary. Um, I do have some soy milk powder. Some canned stuff. I've got uh, some canned pinto beans, some canned corn, canned green beans, and some canned pears. Now, if you're like me, everybody has a sweet tooth. So I uh, I don't like to pack a lot of sugary stuff because sugar and salt, anything high salt or high sugar is gonna make you thirsty. It's gonna make you need to drink your rationed water. So they recommend low sugar, low salt, um, but still stuff that's going to give you comfort and enjoyment. So here's what I found. And I actually found these at the Asian market uh, in Somerset, but it's freeze dried fruit. Of course you can use regular dried fruit too, right? But a uh, special treat, I've got freeze dried mangoes, freeze dried strawberries. Man, I'm hungry. Can I have one now? Is that okay? Sure, sure. I'm starving. Hey, can I have one? Oh, yeah, sure. You want one too, Lexi? No, oh, mercy. Okay. Look at these, like, freeze-dried mangoes. Have you ever seen okay. anything like this? You want that? Oh, you can take mine. Okay. Yeah, take yours. I'll get the next one then. What kind of... Mmm. It literally tastes like a mango. Wow. These are good. If you're looking for freeze-dried fruit, they have freeze-dried vegetables too, but their freeze-dried fruit is absolutely amazing. They didn't even pay us to plug it. <laughs> mm. 
I have to give you the bag now. Really, I'll eat the whole bag in front of everybody. So much for that bag. But good news is, I have one more in my box, so I'm okay. Now I see that. A few other things I threw in here. Bug repellent. Um, if you take any medications, I don't. But I do take some supplements. Herbs, supplements, medications. You don't have to put a whole bottle in. What I like to do is take an empty bottle and just put a three-day supply in the bottom of the bottle. So that way if it expires, you don't lose as much. But um, that's a great way to uh, store your medications. I also have a few... Um, other herbal things. I've got a few herbal tea packets, some soap packets. Sometimes you can get those little free samples of, of soap or body wash or shampoo. Those are great for emergency kits. Um, and uh, one of the things we're famous for here and we use a lot of, the Power Pack Vitamin C drink. It's a great way to get some flavored drink in your water electrolytes and vitamin C, which will boost your immune system. So that's uh, my emergency kit for work. Uh, and I'm always thankful if I don't have to use it, but it's always good to be prepared just in case. I know when uh, my husband was working in Somerset at the health department, he was commuting, you know, 45 minutes every day. We would have, you know, emergencies or whatever, and it always gave me peace of mind to know that he had an emergency box like this at his work every single day. And there were some times that he forgot to take his lunch. And I always knew if he forgot to take his lunch that he could raid his emergency box and there would be plenty of food for him to eat. And uh, every few months I would tell him, i say, hey, you know, it's time for you to bring your emergency box home so I can resupply it with food because you're probably running out. <laughs> You didn't want it to expire, you know. The other thing I have in here is um, toothbrush, toothpaste. You know, some of those things, like, you know, I can probably live without it. But sometimes it's really nice to have a few of those things to keep your morale up. Make you feel like you're a human being. Especially if you're in an emergency situation. Is that like and a bottomless, bottomless box? Or this is my last thing to pull out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This is hand sanitizer. Um, I know they're really hard to find right now. We have a few left for sale here at Christina's Kitchen. But having a little tiny bottle of hand sanitizer somewhere, either in your car or in your emergency kit, um, will also give you peace of mind when you don't have water to wash your hands. So that's it for the for work. Ready for the next slide, right? So the last one we're going to talk about, as far as a kit to go is your home emergency kit. Now I showed you my work one. For the home emergency kit, it's kind of a little bit more unique because the home one is not just for one person, right? Like this kit here was just for me. The home one is for the whole family. And I know for me right now, our family is just my husband and I, but we often have visitors. We often have guests, people staying with us. So I have to realize that my home emergency kit really shouldn't be for just two people. It should be for at least four or five. Um, so if we had someone staying with us, it would be okay. Why would you need a home emergency kit? Well, once again, forest fires, um, you know, other types of storms or things that you need to emergency move to an area. Now, if a tornado hit your house and decimated it, uh, unless you could find where the emergency kit was buried in the rubble, it probably wouldn't do you a lot of good. But uh, for any other evacuation type situations, having an emergency kit ready to go is so important. So since I have to build a bigger kit with more food and more stuff, how do I do it? Uh, if I have a very, very simple way that I do it. And that is, um, I have two boxes and one I did not bring because it would take us all day to show you. But one of them is my camping box. So the camping box is what my husband and I use every summer when we go camping. It has all of our camping gear in it. So it has a tent, it's got um, our air mattress, um, it has our camp stove, our pots, our pans, um, tarps, all uh, 
plate silverware, you know, all the camping gear, the lighter, the hatchet, whatever you would need for camping is all in one great big box. And that box is something that we could throw in the car if we needed to in case of emergency. And we would have all kinds of survival supplies, um, including a pot and a stove so we could actually cook on it. Um, and so because of that, uh, and I'm, our main thing right now is pantry preparedness, so I'm not gonna show you all the camping stuff, but I wanna show you my food box. Um, and that is very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it's very heavy. Uh, this is my food box for emergencies. And you'll notice, does it say on the side there? Yeah. yeah. Can you read what it says there? It says camp food. This is basically my box that I fill up with food for travel, for trips, for staying in a hotel, and for camping. It's all non-perishable food. Um, and of course, you know, some of it might be a little bit more processed, a few of it, some of it needs to be cooked and some of it doesn't, um, because when we go camping, we can cook over an open fire or we can cook on the camp stove. But because I know that if we had to evacuate, I would be grabbing the camp stove. I know I can still use that in that type of situation too. So every, uh, January, I start filling this box. I don't fill it up in one week. I usually fill it up between January, February, sometimes into March, depending on, because I just add a few things to my grocery wrap every single week until I have this box full where I want it. And then for the rest of the year, anytime we go on a trip, go on vacation, go on a camping trip, I simply open this box and pack all of our food out of this box. By the end of the year, this box is empty. I have no waste, I have no expired food, I have no, nothing I have to throw away. It's all been used by us. But at any point during that year, I know there's at least a three day supply of food. Of course, at the beginning, there's probably a two week supply of food <laughs> for our family. And uh, I don't have to worry. So I'm gonna show you some of the things I keep in my camping box. Some of the things you'll notice are a repeat of the few things I had in the uh, travel box for my emergency kit and other things are different. So I have some of these quinoa meals again. Those are great for uh, eating lunch in the car or in a hotel room. Um, of course, I also have dry cereal still and crackers. Dried fruit, this is a big bag of dried apples. Um, of course, I have my favorite corn bins again. I have a whole box of granola bars, uh, which I let dwindle down and then refill at the beginning of the year when they run out. Then I have a few other things like... Uh, now, you, now you see why she keeps it hidden away in a box and not like... What, out. so you don't eat them all? <laughs> I bury this box in the bottom of the pantry. He can't get to it if he wanted to. <laughs> if I really um, wanted to. If you really wanted to, you could. Uh, this is ramen. Uh, it's not your typical ramen. It's, it's actually whole grain and gluten-free made of millet and brown rice. Uh, but we do carry it here on occasion at the restaurant. Great camping food. Uh, also... And you can get these at Kroger uh, or Costco or Sam's Club, um, but uh, you can also find them at Aldi's, I believe, and Walmart. But they're basically pouches of pre-cooked rice or quinoa. They've got all different flavors. And it's already cooked, but it's hard. It just needs to be warmed a little bit. Um, if you have a microwave, you cook it in a very short amount of time. Um, if uh, you're at a camping, you can warm it up on a camp stove or a frying pan or however you want it. It doesn't take very long and it's already mostly cooked. So it's um, very easy to, like my husband and I will use it for haystacks out in the woods. I'll bring some canned beans and a bag of rice and uh, we can have our taco salad or haystacks out in the woods on our camping trips. Uh, of course, I also bring things like, you know, canned beans, 
uh, canned diced tomatoes, canned corn and green beans, your basic vegetables, jam, peanut butter, there's the peanut butter, of course I also do the powdered soy milk, and of course in a larger amount, or also the regular milk as well. Already wet. I have a few dried soup mixes that I like to keep along. Um, they, they have to give us a recipe. They for that. rehydrate very easily. Um, well, just I mean, it's just dried potatoes and uh, peas and celery and onion and garlic and you know all your dried stuff. You can buy different types of mixes. And of course, you can always throw in spaghetti and spaghetti sauce, because if you had a canned stove, you can boil spaghetti. Um, and of course, if we take that camping. There's other things you can find too, if you're looking for um, less calories. Uh, you can get, and I found these both at Walmart and at um, uh, Kroger, and this is actually a cauliflower rice. So it's actually cauliflower, chopped up in little bits, but it's vacuum sealed and it's ready to eat. You don't have to cook it. Um, and uh, there's different types of those as well. I also have my camping seasoning kit. So I have my country style seasoning. I have my Himalayan pink salt. I got my onion powder. Um, and I also have um, my oil kit. I keep a little bit of olive oil and coconut oil. Uh, so I can pretty much, like, I've got my whole cooking selection. I can do campfire cooking with that. So you can have um, Christina's kitchen in the woods. <laughs> we sure could. <laughs> uh, I also, in my camping box, I have a roll of tin foil so I can do campfire cooking as well. Um, so I think that gives you some ideas. Uh, of course, I also do canned fruit. Uh, We even have canned uh, vegetarian hot dogs. Uh, so there's, there's all different types of things that you can do. But uh, like I said, all this stuff is fast, easy, and non-perishable. And uh, like I said, by the end of the year with all of our uh, trips that we normally take um, and our camping trips that we like to go on, we've used it all up so it's not a waste. Uh, and then I restock it again at the beginning of the year. Of course, this isn't the only thing in my pantry. I also have some shelves in my pantry, too, that have, you know, your everyday pantry items as well. But at least I know I have enough in a box that I could grab it in an emergency. And uh, I told my husband, I said, you know what? We could go on a trip at a moment's notice, and I wouldn't need to go to the grocery store because everything we need for our trip, I just open the box, grab a nice chest, and start loading up. Uh, the only thing I have to add is whatever fresh fruit or vegetables out of the fridge and uh, we have a great meal. So um, even when we travel, we rarely have to go out and eat, which is really nice, and that saves a lot of money on the food budget. <laughs> so that's uh, some things. I think we have a few slides. Have you put any of those slides up yet? I put that food kit slide. It's up right now? Yeah. Okay, so you can see just a few things mis listed there on the home food kit, dry cereal, powdered milk, canned beans, Applesauce packs, uh, ramen noodles, instant oatmeal, dried fruit, nuts, um, salt seasoning, spaghetti, granola bars, crackers, instant rice, peanut butter jam, and then of course your medicine or supplements, uh, whatever you need for the family for five days. Also, do you have the home emergency kit up there? There's switch the, switch the slide, slide to that one. The home emergency kit. Okay, home emergency kit. Okay. So you can see kind of um, some of the things that we have in our home emergency kit. Like I told you, I just have my camping box and my food box. But uh, if you were to put one together, here's some of the things that you would need. Uh, water, they recommend one gallon of water per person per day. So for Daniel and I, we actually keep water at home in five gallon jugs. And uh, if we ever had to evacuate, we would just grab a five gallon jug. Um, if you have pets, you need to put together a pet kit with 
pet food and some water for them. Um, and if they have any medications or needs or a leash or cage or, you know, any of that type of stuff, you need to have that together. If you have children, you make sure you have um, your baby necessities or your children necessities, whether it be um, uh, baby food or formula or um, special uh, needs things that your children have, or even a toy that they, that they need um, to give them something to do while you're in, in uh, quarantine or whatever. Uh, home food kit, which we just went over. Get a tarp, uh, some camping gear, a camp stove, and uh, I wish I brought my camp stove with me because I could show you how I actually cook. But our camp stove is a one burner stove. It's not a backpacking stove, it's a full camp stove, but it's one burner. So it's got one uh, little fuel tank underneath it with a burner on top. And the fuel actually takes uh, uh, unleaded gas. So the gas that we use for our lawnmower or for our car also works for the stove. And it's really nice because it takes, uh, the whole stove is smaller than this box right here. Um, it's very small, it doesn't take up very much space. And if our electricity is out, we can set it up on the back porch and we can cook. Um, and it's amazing how much you can cook with one burner. And we don't have to worry about having special gas on hand propane or anything because uh, it just takes the same gas that we have in the garage for the lawnmower. Um, and uh, so that is my favorite kind of camp stove, but any kind of camp stove. Make sure you have a can opener, um, paper towels, waterproof matches or a lighter, of course your sleeping bag, matches, something to sleep on, your bathroom supplies, first aid kit, uh, flashlight, weather radio is nice but you don't have to have it. Um, cell phone charger, of course, uh, towels, a set of clothing, rope, duct tape, trash bags, uh, paper and pen, and emergency cash. Uh, also important documents like your insurance papers or uh, medical papers. Um, and also have a family emergency plan. That's very important. And of course, this list assumes that the car kit is already in your car. <laughs> so what I did, for us is I wrote us a little plan and I'm not gonna let you read what it is, but um, if we have an emergency, I have a checklist of exactly what I need to grab. And my checklist says the camping box, the camp stove, some cat food, water jug, sleeping bag, the food box, uh, the computers, um, documents, and a coat. And it says if I'm at work, I have the box at work and my kit in the car. I can sleep at work if needed, or I can evacuate to an evacuation shelter. Um, I also have a designated friend in town that I could go to their house if I had to spend the night in town, um, needed a place to take a shower or whatever, and wasn't able to get back home. So having a plan that you and your family understand, know, uh, having, uh, we have a specific contact person outside of our state if we need to contact somebody um, that uh, my husband and I would both contact the same person uh, to find out whereabouts if we end up in different places at different shelters or whatever the case may be. Um, having a plan in place is so important. And um, what time is it, by the way? I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's oh, we're doing great. It's almost seven o'clock. <laughs> Um, I wanted to talk just a little bit more in my last uh, few minutes um, about the pantry. Uh, we talked about having, you know, a two to four week supply of dry foods, but there's a few things that you can easily stock up on without wiping all the grocery shelves clean. Um, there are places that you can order in bulk. Uh, a 25 pound bag or a 10 pound bag of some of your staples, like whether it be, you know, uh, a 10 pound bag of rice or beans uh, or oats or you know uh, millet quinoa some of your staples that you that you know that you use a lot of at home that you're going to use within the course of six months uh, there's nothing wrong with buying a bag and sticking it in a five gallon bucket put a few bay leaves in it to keep the bugs out um, and you know hey if push came to shove and you couldn't get to the grocery store because a huge blizzard came and knocked down all the trees uh, within between your house and town and it took two weeks to chainsaw your way out. You know you can eat beans and rice. Um, 
or whatever the case may be, having some of those necessities on hand in a little bit larger quantity is not a bad idea. And the neat thing is when you buy it, buy a 10 pound bag or a 25 pound bag, it's cheaper um, than if you just buy the little bitty bags in the store. Uh, you can often get organic or more specialty projects that way. Um, and uh, if you need any help ordering stuff like that, I have um, some information I can share with you as to where you can order in bulk um, very easily and uh, save some money on your grocery bill at the same time. Another thing that you can do um, besides uh, putting a five gallon bucket or putting bay leaves in to keep the bugs out, you can also put in, um, they have the little oxygen packets. Uh, you can order them on Amazon for fairly inexpensive. And if you put those in a jar or a sealed bucket, um, it will prevent uh, any uh, bugs from growing or multiplying in that area and also helps keep it fresher. Um, you can also get uh, vacuum seal is another way to do that. Um, and then of course, when it comes to fresh fruits and vegetables, whenever the farmer's market comes on, uh, the garden comes on, I like to preserve. So, I mean, just for the fun of it, even here at the restaurant, uh, when tomato season comes on, we can our own tomatoes um, that we need for the restaurant for the whole year. I can tomatoes for my use at home. And uh, then I'm eating garden produce all year long and I don't have to worry about buying canned tomatoes in the store. Or when it comes to um, apples, uh, my husband is an applesauce monster, right? <laughs> he eats applesauce almost every day. And uh, we go through a lot of applesauce. So whenever apples come in season, um, I get several boxes of apples and we spend a day and we make applesauce and we make enough applesauce to last us for the year. So even in the case of not being able to get to a grocery store, you have some of those things on hand, canned. Um, plus it, it helps your local farmer's market because those dear farmers that come to the farmer's market, they offer those vegetables for sale. You know, if you just buy two cucumbers because you want to eat them uh, for lunch, well, yeah, you help the farmer out a little bit. But if you buy a bag of cucumbers because you want to make a few jars of pickles to use for the rest of the year, well, you help the farmer a lot more. So um, it's a great way to support your local farmers, especially as the summertime is approaching, um, as well as uh, preserving your own garden produce and uh, lower your grocery bill and promote local uh, farmers at the same time. So I think that's everything I wanted to share. What do you think? Is there anything I missed, Daniel? I, th I think that's it. Did anybody else have any other questions or comments? Did you want to mention the ready.gov? Oh yes, uh, there's a website I wanted to share with you if you're interested in more things on preparedness. Um, because like I said, I just barely scratched the surface and that's a website called, what is it you say? Ready, ready.gov. Ready.gov, ready.gov. And I think that should be on your screen right now. Uh, and if you go to that website, you will see a whole uh, list of different scenarios that uh, could possibly happen and how to prepare for each one of those um, in unique ways. And so they have a whole lot more list than I've covered tonight uh, with a lot more information if you are interested in more than just the food aspect of it. And uh, feel free to contact me if you have any more questions. I'm always happy to share recipes on how to use the stuff in your pantry. Um, or if you need like camping ideas or trip travel ideas on how to have food on the road, I'd be happy to share as well. And we'll try to put the uh, slides from this presentation. I know there's a lot of lists. We'll try to put those in a, a note uh, and put them in the comments on the Facebook where you, where you can yes. download those. Yes, we will try to uh, make a, a PDF or um, some JPEGs of the handouts that you saw on your screen uh, so that you can download those and use them as checklists or you can download more detailed ones from ready.gov. So um, I just wanna thank you all for joining us. It was so much fun to uh, know that you were with me even if I couldn't see your faces. <laughs> Feel free to comment, yeah, share, say hi. And uh, also we have recorded this whole class. Uh, we'll be uploading it to our YouTube channel so you can share it. And this Facebook live broadcast will be available. We're not deleting it. So you can go back and watch it again if you would like. Uh, share it with your friends. And uh, 
I'm hoping maybe next month we can have a real class instead of just Facebook Live with no audience. But um, until next month, either way, I'll be on Facebook Live. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and God bless you.